show because last night coming live from Atlanta, we had WWE present Bad Blood and there were so many things, so many things to talk about to come away with for the show. But I wanted to get your impressions of everything first, Banks, and how you felt about the show overall. It was a good show. That opening versus Drew versus CM Punk. Hey, man, I want to apologize, CM Punk. I wasn't familiar with your game, even though I was. I've been knowing about CM Punk since about 03, 04. But at the same time, I got to get that joke off, and I do have to apologize. I'm always talking about him. You feel me saying he old, he washed up? Nah, that match is candidate for match of the year. It might be match of the year. Great storytelling. Uh, a lot of blading. And it was great. Uh, Drew got too much blading, so now he had to get staples at the top of his head. But, see, it was a great example of how you tell a story in a match that comes with violence like that. You know, I'm not a big predicator of, you know, violent matches. I don't like garbage wrestling, even though I grew up watching ECW. But you could still make an art to it. I think Mankind versus Undertaker at 98 King of the Ring is an example of that, even though a lot of that stuff wasn't supposed to happen. But they still made an art because we're talking about it 26 years later. This Hell in a Cell match, for it to be the opening, if that would have been the only match they had on the card, that would have been a great way for – that would have been a great pay-per-view. I would have paid my money for that. So that was a good match. Uh, Nia versus Bailey, and they gave us something a little different. Uh, you know, Big Sexy, the real Big Sexy, Nia Jax, even though <laughs> – hey, shouts out to Diesel. You know what I mean? Steve – I'm sorry, Steve Nash – uh <laughs> Kevin Nash. Uh, Kevin Nash, you know, love him. Click this podcast. I listen every week. But you know, that was a good match overall. They but did something different, you know, big sexy. She did the Frankensteiner, so I know Scott Steiner, who was there, was happy. Uh what else matches? Did the, the Dom versus or not Dom, but Liv versus Rhea versus match. Rhea with Dom. Yeah, pretty good. Um, I hope that's coming to an end, just like Finn versus Damian, because it was like, hey, man, good match. So let me say this. Overall, good card, but for us, it's Judgment Day versus Rhea and uh, Damian. I think this need to be it. I, I, I felt that way about the Bloodline storyline, so I'll just cut to the main event. I felt like that a year and some change now about the Bloodline stuff. But, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about it right now, but when that man came back, I was like, oh, no, nah, we can keep this going on to WrestleMania. Only when he evolved, when he got involved earlier this year, I said, all right, cool. Let's keep this going on for some time. But then when they started making the bloodline 2.0, I was like, that's cool. But it still, it ain't the same without The Rock. It's just certain people you have involved in certain stuff that just give it the it factor. When you got one of the biggest draws in Hollywood history, and, but we still don't even see him like that. It's weird with The Rock because we know this dude numbers. We know he's one of the biggest top five draws in Hollywood history. But you'd be like, man, that's The Rock. That's the jabroni beating, pie eating, eyebrow raising, trail blazing. Like when you see him, it's just The Rock. And he came back with the final boss with that Rudy Pooh ass title. Came through, said, hey, it's about to get, it's about to get real. And then he said, let them know it's about that time. I'm about to get y'all up out of here. And then the IG live afterwards had me rolling. Shouts out to Seahawk. He said, This is how you know the rock black. He went on IG live after he did a move. First of all, he was drunk as hell. But what's new? He always be drunk. Like I tell people, I'm like, damn, he stayed drunk. But no, he was drunk as hell. You could tell because how he was cutting the promo. But the fact that he was enamored, enamored under um alcohol. And still cutting a promo lets you know, bro. Some people just, some people just got it, bro. Pause. I, I think I could, I could kind of piggyback off of those impressions as far as how I felt about Bad Blood. That show was an easy eight point five out of ten. I think from top to bottom, the card was super solid. First things first. I've been say y'all need to apologize to Phil yesterday. Kind of confirmed it. What I will say, the cell is back. Hell in a cell, as we know it to be hell in a cell, is back. I think that these two, I think Drew and Punk did a phenomenal job with bringing back the lore of hell in a cell. 
and the danger and what it meant to be involved in Hell in a Cell. This was an, a match that when it was originally introduced was something that was supposed to shorten your career. And it's like there was no blood, but like over the last couple of years, we didn't really see any blood. We didn't see anything that was super like death defying, but we saw it in this match. And we also saw how much it meant to both of these people, Drew and CM Punk, to be in this match. I love the bead spot at the end when Drew kind of threw all the beads in Punk's face. I think that was amazing. I think that him running into the steps and, you know, Punk winning the way that he did was apropos. But even down to, like, when Punk was leaving the cage and he couldn't stand on his own. Like, they told a story from when they first entered the cage to when they both got to the back. And I think that that attention to detail is something that's admirable. And I think that that's something that a lot of pro wrestlers can learn from because it's the little things. And especially with this one, this is the first time we've really seen blood at this level during the Triple H era, especially in one of these matches. And I think that they did a really good job of reestablishing how just how dangerous it is to be involved in a Hell in a Cell match. So there's that. Um, going from there to the Bailey Nia Jax match, good match, but I think that my highlight was kind of like the Nia Jax sitting up and seeing Tiffany and the referee with the briefcase because this is a slow burn, right? Like that could have easily been a Tiffany cash in, but I feel like they're doing a really good job heightening the tension between Nia Jax and Tiffany so that when the cash in does happen, I think that Tiffany's going to be a face. People are already in, are, are enamored by Tiffany. Uh, people already like her. I feel like they're kind of just, you know, tugging the tension of this relationship so that by the time Tiffany actually wins the title, even as a cash-in, it has kind of personal meaning and implications because not only is she winning the title from, uh, from Naya, she's getting a victory over an abuser. And I think that that's something that's really, really paramount in this entire thing. Um, going from that, as far as the the Judgment Day matches, Damian and Finn was cool. I liked Liv and um, and Rhea. Um, I feel like the way that Raquel came back was sloppy. I felt like the ending of that match. I think what was supposed to happen is that Rhea, was that Raquel was supposed to help Liv win. But because the referee saw everything, it didn't make sense for it to kind of like be what it was. So they just, as soon as she saw, as soon as the ref saw everything happen, they just like made it a DQ. And that was just kind of that. To be completely honest, I'm done with, I'm done with Damien and Finn. I am not necessarily done with the Rhea situation because I feel like Liv kind of set the tone of what she wanted to do. She wanted to take everything from Rhea Ripley. That's the goal. So she took the title. She took the boyfriend. Now she took a former best friend of Rhea. And so now this is a way to keep Rhea Ripley in a main event picture without having her go after the title, which I think was a problem with a lot of former big WWE women superstars, like a Charlotte Flair, where it's like she can only come back if she's only going for a title. But like in this case, you have Rhea feuding with someone who is a, another large woman who has personal ties to Rhea Ripley, right? And so now this is a way to kind of have a program that has championship implications without Rhea having to go for the title. So I think it's smart that Rhea stays kind of in this rhythm. Um, going from there into Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa, versus um versus oh Roman Reigns and Cody versus Solo and Jacob. I really really loved this match. I loved the return of Jimmy. I felt like something was something big was about to happen, especially when they had that shot on Solo when he was about to give the spike to Roman and you saw people in the back like oh shit. Like you knew that something was about to happen. And I feel like Jimmy's return came at a time. It came at the perfect time because it showed his importance. It showed how valuable he was to Roman. And I love just kind of, once again, this idea of a slow build of Jimmy coming back into the fold. And then obviously The Rock comes back, 
doesn't really say anything. He just throws up the one, two, three, gives one of these, and he's out of there. Perfect. It's cryptic. It keeps us guessing. It, it keeps us wondering, what does that one, two, three mean? Is there something else coming? Is there something else that's about to happen? Like you said, with the whole live after Bad Blood, he cut a promo, but you, you know, and he said some stuff, but it was one of those you still wanted to know what was about to happen. And so I think that Bad Blood was a really, 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 really good premium live event. It also set a bunch of records, which we'll get into in the next segment. But yeah, man, I think Bad Blood was a great event. I think it was good from top to bottom. But I want to know how y'all feel about Bad Blood 2024. Let us know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching the Culture 316 podcast. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you guys can stay up to date with all upcoming videos and events pertaining to Culture 316.